Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's the one and only Cast of All Marquis, and we're back with another story here on my channel. So, <clears throat> like I said in the last video, if you haven't watched the last video, you're more than welcome to go back and revisit it. Uh, I left uh, my home city in like 2015, and I started to like change a lot. I started reading more, I started working out. I mean, mind, body, and spirit, I started, you know, just being more of who I was told I would always be and becoming the man that I always knew that I could be. Um, and I started, you know, kicking it with different people, people that, you know, back in the day I never would have even thought of even bumping into and everything. And, uh, of course, because I was single, I started dating. Uh... In fact, I might, yeah, I got to think about dropping this story about what happened right before that, but anyway, that's another story for another day, right? So, <clears throat> okay, now that we tracking, so I find myself meeting this girl from Fort Smith, Arkansas. Now, here's what I liked about her. She was real cool, laid back, everything. Um, I met her through, you know, friends of friends. Um, which, you know what? I'm going to put it to you like this. The friends of friends who I met her through, you know, they were former lokes, okay? And, you know... Which, you know, that's no real reason to, like, not like nobody and not, you know, experience anybody or whatever. But, you know, they was in the military and they were former lokes. And, you know, they we were, you know, cool. You know what I mean? They got out the military and that's how they met the person that I'm talking about here. Okay? Um, I don't want to mention her name, so we're just going to say her name was Nami. Okay, now Nami looks exactly like the thumbnail. Spitting image. Okay, cool. Now, Nami isn't originally from this country. She's from the country of Lao. Now, that's Lao Ocean City to be exact. That's her home, her home turf. So as I'm getting to know Nami and we kicking it and everything else, Nami used to work at a nail salon. And you know, what I Another thing I liked about her, she was very ambitious. Nami used to, you know what I'm saying, she knew how to do nails, massages, everything else, eyebrows, lash, you know. Not typical, but, you know, she knew the business, and she wanted her own nail shop. I had money to invest at the time, and I was looking for another investment I could have got into. I had already owned a nail shop before in Tennessee, so if you want to do something in Arkansas, and it for me, it made more sense because I was more frequent in that area at that particular time because of the consulting that I was doing. It, You know, everything was starting to line up. And just as everything started to line up, it blew up. So, I then, and I guess, you know, just like, you know that chart that we used to do back in English class that describes... How a movie or a play is. That's exactly how it was. In the beginning, everything was good. She was fine, beautiful, ambitious, intelligent, everything else. You know, she did have a child, but that was neither here nor there. Great co-parenting. The dude, he wasn't even in the country. So that made it even better. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have to worry about no baby daddy issues or all this other stuff. You know what I mean? It was what it was. So, and, you know, everything that she was doing then was for her kid. You know what I mean? She had her kid in private school, which I thought was wonderful. Like, dang, she got good parenting skills. And, you know, I'm, you know, I'm at this time falling in love. Next thing I know, she like, hey, we going to, I want to invite you. Hold on, y'all. All right. Sorry about that. I had to go someplace that was a little bit more uh, festive. Change your scenery is always good. So next thing you know, she's like, yo, I want to invite you over to uh, 
they got this thing at the temple, and, you know, it's two events. They had a thing at the Laotian temple, you know what I'm saying, for the monks, and, you know, who were Buddhists, which, you know, hey, I've actually, you know, researched and studied everything. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. And she was like, I want to take you to this country club. Now, I didn't know at this particular time that Asians really, really like country music. I'm talking about bull riding country music the whole entire nine. I'm talking about Garth Brooks type country music. I mean, now me, I'm a music connoisseur myself. I like country, but I'm not going to say country music is my top eight. You know what I mean? It might make top ten, but not top eight music uh, genres of all time. But, you know, I go anyway because, like I said at this time, I'm just culturally diverse. Then, next thing you know, it's just like everything went downhill. Come to find out, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, and I used to always tell her, like, you know, first red flag was I was like, yo, so, you know, when... Why we going, you know, go back to your country or whatever? She was like, no, we're never going back to my country. You will never come with me to visit or whatever. And I'm like, damn, why? She was like, cuz. They'll eat you alive. They don't care about me and then they will eat you alive. Like, like, you'll be married within by the time we get out the airport. I'm like, damn, for real? <laughs> like, you exaggerating. She was like, no, you just don't understand. They really, 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 really love brothers. Especially when you're a black man. There's the N-word, which even some of them, they all the way with the BS. That N-words be on. And then, but the ones who like, look, I'm a black man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that she wasn't lying. And so this is what happened. So I get there. Suited and booted, everything else. We go to the temple. Number one, they drinking at the temple. Now, you know, different strokes for different folks, but, like, I didn't know at this time. Like, I've always heard, like, Japanese people, they'll drink themselves into a new liver. Matter of fact, it's like an honor to destroy your liver. You know, it's part of their customs or whatever. Koreans, they kind of like that. Even some Chinese people, Shanghai mostly, they even like that. But no. Lao Ocean people are just like that too. I mean, they drinking. It's crazy. It's really like a big party. But people donating all this other stuff. You know, I meet some of her other cousins. Her male cousins. And they lokes. And, you know, I never had a problem with the lokes. In fact, me and the lokes in my former life, we did a lot of business together. They like, man, you cool, man. Hey, they like, welcome to the family. Yo, you know what I'm saying? Everything's just love and energy. But then it's like a competition. And I'm noticing the competition is like her cousin who, like, she's related to everybody either through marriage or is a cousin of her or, you know, whatever. Because, like, they're really like a very tight-knit community. But they, like, it's a competition. Like, the girl was like, I work uh, 109 hours a week. I ain't nobody work harder than me and everything else. And, like, they competing over who works the most hours and gets the most money. And then it goes into the materialistic side of things because they like to be, like, Chinese women. So, Chinese women, everything is about stature and Louis Vuitton and who has the latest, greatest of this and everything else, you know. Like, they'll swallow blood before they swallow their pride. Now, granted, Lao Asian women are very hardworking. But, shoot, they was definitely the money that they made. What they don't spend on their kids, they spend on themselves. And I mean in a major way. I mean, that dang gonna park lot and look like an, at the temple, that look like an exotic god dang on Aporium. I mean, I'm talking about Range Rover. Mercedes, AMG, uh, they, I'm like, dang, y'all out here getting it, getting it, like, look, I mean, I'm very hard working myself, some say I'm the hardest working man in the fitness, like James Brown, but dang, y'all working, like, you do know, you do know your body needs to sleep at some point, pimping, 
whatever. So, all right. So that goes on. Then I noticed like she really can't handle her liquor, and that is one of the things that you know. It's one thing that we at the house and we get in blitzed. But when I got to pick you up out of your throw up at the temple. Strike two. Then we get to the. To the. To the country club. It's. It was weird. Like I've never been to a country club that plays. 98% 98% country music and 2% uh, you know hip hop music which was and they was in there doing the most and she was then she saw her ex in there and then I made the situation awkward I mean it was just crazy but you know you know finding out that you know like she was really that paranoid about me like that kind of made it a red flag And then, but then for good reason, because her cousin in the front of her was like, I'll do the, well, I ain't going to, because this is YouTube. Let's just say she made me an offer that 95% of the boys of America would never refuse. (laughs) Like, oh, oh, wow. Um, But, you know, after that and everything, we kind of like. We never had an argument or anything. It's just that we just faded, you know what I mean? And then, you know, she wasn't really about saving money. She was about blowing money. And, you know, when I had changed my life, I had already been through the blowing money fast, you know, part of my life and everything else. So I was about, you know, having things of substance and, you know, growth, you know, like I said, mentally, physically, and, you know, spiritually. So... It just never did work. Um, we still cool to this day. Like, you know, we'll always be friends, but nah, that, that didn't work. But that led also into, you know what? I'm about to start dating globally. So, Nami, I thank you, honey, because, yeah, you uh, you taught me to... You know, it's I've always been a person since I was younger to interracially date. You know what I mean? And which y'all gonna get a video about that in a minute on why I interracially date. But when I started globally, internationally dating, that was the best decision I've ever made in my life. I I promise you. In fact, it was so great and epic. It healed so much so so much pain and trauma and things that i had already been through best decision i've ever made in my life but i'm gonna give y'all them stories in another day this your boy casaball marquis signing out be good to yourselves and be good to others that's the moral of the story see thought i forgot see thought i forgot peace